Greetings and welcome to this week's edition of Bring It On. My name's Bob Hayes and I'm going to be your host for today's show. I have candidate Wes Bloss with me for today's show and I'm interviewing him. He's a candidate for one of the four candidates for Board of Selectmen in the town of Hanson. Wes, how are you? Bob, it's nice to meet you again. It's always good to see candidates coming forward for boards of selectmen or any type of volunteer positions. It's, it's a difficult thing to get volunteers today, so we applaud what you're trying to do here. Wes, can you tell us a little bit so the viewers get a little bit of background of who Wes Bloss is and your history? I know I'm pretty sure you're a Hansonite from the conversations we've had born and brought up, so give us a, a little uh, snapshot of you through your life. Well, yeah, I mean, about as handsome, I guess, as you get. I, because I was born here in 1950, Plymouth, uh, Plymouth Hospital, but then I ended up here. And I have, gone, I have spent four years in Ohio for college, and uh, my, fam my wife and son and I lived abroad for a year. But other than that, it's been handsome the entire way. So I'm 67 years old. I'm about to have my 50th class reunion. I graduated from Whitman Hanson, obviously, the old Whitman Hanson. And it just seems, it's like amazing how far, fast 50 years went to go from that graduation to this one. Um, so I've taught for 40 years in the Hanson school system, which just says I couldn't even get that far away. It is funny to think my family, the Bloss family, comes from through New York. And my mother's family, a big chunk of them, came through Nova Scotia and Maine. But there is a line that goes all the way back to the earliest part of it. It's like, wow, you know, 400 years, and I live about 18 miles from the coast. That's about as far west <laughs> as I've managed to migrate in this. So we taught 40 years at Hanson Middle School, Indian Head School. I met my wife Joanne there. We taught for seven years there. I told the priest we were dating for seven years. She thought a thunderbolt was going to come out of the sky and <laughs> knock me dead. But when we had done everything else that we could think of as teachers, it's like, okay, so we'll get married. So we got married. Um, we have one, one son, Nathaniel, who's now 36 and is just, he's just married a really wonderful woman. They live in Maine. She's She's divorced and has three young sons, 8, 10, and 12. So all of a sudden, we've become, he's become an instant dad, and we've become instant grandparents. And it's good because as we gave up teaching and all of a sudden didn't have access to all the kids who were the best part of teaching always. It's like, all right, well, suddenly we have three youngsters and we're starting all over. It's like, They've got to know this about science. They've got to know this. They've got to know the Battle of Salamis. And uh, do they have met Robert Frost memorized? We've we got to make sure these boys know their poetry. So it's like the poor three kids are just being inundated all of a sudden with education from educators. <laughs> well, that's probably not the worst thing that somebody could be inundated with would be education. I don't think, you know, in the role that I play as a volunteer, as a chair of the school committee, education is all about what you do, so I applaud you for 40 years of teaching. And Joanne? Joanne, too. She's, jo she's she, been in. She wants in you to know she was there for 41. So she's an, an elder teacher than you. She's got you by a year. When I was, when Mr. Gagnon hi said he announced that he was hiring me to join their team, Joanne and the other two females on the team just about tore their hair out and was like, not him. Oh, no. Not, not that West Bloss. He's awful. <laughs> And Mr. Gagnon said, you'll take care of him. So at our wedding, Mr. Gagnon said to her, well, when I said you'll take care of him, I didn't mean you had to go to this extent. I didn't have to tie the knot. Didn't have to tie the knot to do it. Well, that's great. It, it's good to see that you're a Hansonite through and through, and I know that you've taught because just from being involved, there's thousands of kids that have seen Mr. and Mrs. Bloss over the years through Hanson Middle School. And, and through the elementary schools and being around teaching. So that's, that's an awesome thing. I guess my next question that I'm going to ask you is, what makes you want to run for Board of Selectmen? I think it's just I have never run for any office. I, I mean, I was on the Open Space Planning Committee back in the 80s and 90s. I've been on, involved in recreation for longer, I think, than I've been teaching. But I, 
it's just seemed like it was time, you know, I'll be, I'm 67, I'll be 70 soon. It's like, I guess I should, you know, give back to the town in some way, at least try, go for an elected office and see. I'm going in without a big agenda or anything, but it's like, I, I feel badly. There really aren't a lot of people who volunteer for boards. You listen to the selectmen's meetings, and every week they seem to be listing all the. We would love a vol. We would love volunteers for this board and this committee and this whatever. And it's like, you know, it's hard to get people. So it's like, it's worth a try. You know, uh, whether or not I get elected, it's it's fun just to be involved in the process, I guess. And I mean, uh, cl clearly, education is my our biggest priority. I mean, we just support the schools in Hanson. We're so proud of what we've accomplished over the years. And I don't mean Joanne and me, I mean the Women Hanson School District. Well, I'd say Joanne and you have been a large part of that also. I mean, so that there should be some pats on the back for that. 40 years of being teachers is nothing that uh, most people didn't accomplish that. That's a big accomplishment. What do you see moving forward? You're running for the Board of Selectmen. It's your first foray, as you said, in, into that type of a game, or that type of an office, I shouldn't mm -hmm. say a game, that office. What do you see as some of the things in Hanson that need to be addressed or, or that you'd like to see? I mean, most of the time you said you don't have an agenda, and I, I believe that. You know, um, What do you see as you'd like to see Hanson do? Obviously a really big, first of all, I would say go green. The greener we can get, the better. I think next to education, it's like I just, I'm, I'm so strong on the environment and being environmentally conscious that it's like anything the town of Hanson can do in the next several years to get greener, I think is important. But then I, mean, I grew up on Main Street. And I grew up on the heyday of Main Street when Main Street was the center of town. When I grew up at the right at the foot of Phillips Street, right by the train station, we had the post office was there, the library was there, the market was there, Rexall Drugstore was there, the hardware was there, and of course it was all anchored by Ocean Spray. But that was the center of town. You went there to be handsome. I think I can remember our sesquicentennial parade, our 150th anniversary. Funny to think that the 200th is not That's that That's right far. around the corner, right? It's, not, it's right around the corner. It's like, how did that happen? But it's like, I can remember it lined up on our street. All of Hanson was on lined Main Street. It, it's cruel to say that, I mean, the center town had Town Hall and Walkie's store, which is now 48 whatever liquor. But it's like there wasn't anything much there. I remember when the BPM came in, and that was a big deal, the Boston Public Market now shows. But I, obviously, what's, it's clear. Once Ocean Spray left, that just has left a gaping hole in, the part, in that part of town. And we, because we have a, the railroad stops right there. It's, we, I mean, we have a great Dunkin' Donuts. That's kind of what we have right now. Okay, okay we got the Dunkin' Donuts, but it would be that is such a beautiful location to revitalize. And I don't look at me as far as saying, oh, and how are you going to do that? Because you know, it's an enormous burden. The I, ocean spray buildings, which I lived in through my youth, I can't imagine what that labyrinth is like now or what it would take. So, uh, so I don't know exactly what can be done, what movement is being made. I have a couple friends who are moving their metal fabrication shop into a, one of the buildings alongside the railroad track. So, I mean, little things happen, but it's still, it's a rundown, it's a hole in the middle of town. But I can remember in the 80s and 90s on the open space plan, Phil Linquist, Bob Sutter, um, Harry Kent, uh, we were all we were all working out what can we do with Main Street. We were also doing what can we do with Plymouth County Hospital. Well, that's a done deal now. And it's it's and it's it's taken so long to get Plymouth County Hospital into a done deal state. I I applaud everyone involved who who got to got that taken care of. <laughs> there were several committees. That, that was about like that. a horror show that just that lingered on and on and on. But I, I guess I would just end by saying, but I think Main Street and that area is a huge priority to plug away at, to pick away at, and anything we can do in the coming years 
to bring business back to that. Uh, bring, you know, living space back to that area. It would be such, it's such a natural to have the train there and, you know, people jumping off the train in Hanson and having a center of town right there that is worth hanging around. It's funny because you hit the nail right on the head. A lot of people have said, uh, what do you do with the old Ocean Spray buildings? And if you look here in Whitman, where the studio is, we're right in front of what used to be Bostonian Shoe. Mm. And that was converted into, I think, I could be off a little bit, but somewhere around 120 or 30 units. loft type units. And that might be something for Hanson where the train station is right there. So it might be something for you to pet project along, you know, look for a, maybe so, an anchor that possibly did this building over here and maybe steer them towards that. Because I think a lot of people would like to see that part of town revitalized. Ideas for the hospital. I know uh, everybody's been on the Plymouth County Hospital at one time in their life. I think there's been about 20 different committees over the last 30 odd years of what do you do with Plymouth County Hospital. Is there a proposal now that, that is going on with Plymouth County? As far as I know, I'm, there's, right now it's open space, but whether there is talk of library, senior center, I mean some kind of housing going on up there, but to my knowledge, there's nothing specific or in writing. And I, I don't have a strong, I, I, the open space up there is beautiful, so I mean I'm a big proponent of the Bay Circuit Path. I'd love it to, to see it go through there, that area. But I don't have, I'm not going in with a strong, this is what I think we should do about Plymouth County Hospital. They've had so many committees that have worked on it, and I think it's still just a work in progress that I'm there to support. Okay, that, that's another whole subject and topic that, that runs around town. Anything else you see as the future of Hanson? I know there was talk a few years ago that Shaw's might move and what that might do to the, to the so-called kind of center of town that has shifted. You know, you talked about where the old Cranberry Company was and, and now basically the center of town has shifted over to where Brockland Trust and Shaw's. Exactly, and to that plaza. CVS, and that kind of anchors that plaza. I, I'm pretty sure that plaza's full. I, I don't know if there's any empty stores in there or not. I don't believe so. I think everything's full. And I, I mean, that's a fear you do, I look at, I mean, the Hanover Mall is, is going through a revitalization process. That's difficult. Kingston, the Independence Mall, which is now the Kingston's what? I forget what it is, but it's like, it's an issue. And if to lose Shaw's in that area, to lose that anchor, you, I, I can see that as a gaping hole that I'm not sure. I'm not sure what incentives or... What needs to be done at that point to keep them? Obviously, we need the supermarket. Shaw's is a is a meeting place, too. I mean, well, it's there's like, no question about it's it. It's like where the community goes. You have no choice but to shop. Well, you have so, to su you have to sustain that have, food uh, urge. So I, I I I dread the thought of. Well, I think that's you know you hear that from different people in town. Oh, they're moving, they're leaving, market baskets coming, and I think a lot of that is just chit chat. I, hope so. I, I don't think Shaw's is going anywhere, personally. It's they're in a pretty rural area. I every time I pull into the parking lot, you're parking way away from the store. It's busy, busy, busy place. So I'd hate to see that anything happen to that either. You know, um, there's discussions about DPW building going down off of uh, Pleasant Street. Right. Any opinion on that? I I mean I believe that's pretty much a done deal and a great deal. It's, they're making progress. I know it's not fast enough. I, there's, I mean, let, this is something in all towns, people bemoan the pace. Like, no, nothing happens fast. It's like, no, usually nothing does happen fast. But I, I don't find that, that a sin. And I assume by the time we're ready to move into the Hawks Ave building, it'll be really just what the highway department needs. And heaven knows, the highway department needs a new barn. <laughs> That's that's not a question. It's it's their time. I'm, we have got we have got a good fire station. We've got a great new police station. Our schools are doing well. I mean, built with our buildings and so forth. So it's like I do think it's the highway department's turn. 
Mm -hmm. So, and uh, just talking to a couple people who are on the committee, I mean, they seem very positive that things are moving in the right direction, so. You, you talked about Green Hanson, and I think that's a concern with some of the people with the highway bond moving there that the town of Hanson might be accepting a dirty piece of property. And to my knowledge, that's been cleaned 100, probably, it's probably cleaner than it was ever. Well, that's what we were told. And I, I have no more expertise than the state. So I, I go along with that. I'm, I'm just going, I'm taking that their advice until we hear otherwise. That entire area was an industrial complex all the way back to Albert Burridge. I mean, he was mining the peat bogs there to make dyes and industrial chemicals back in the 10s and 20s. It, it is so interesting to, to just think about that area and that there was a big hotel there and the train stopped there and all Pleasant Street was ho worker houses for his model community. It's hard to know exactly what started being dumped for dyes or chemicals back in the 10s and 20s, but that's not Hawks Ave either. That's not specifically that area. It's the area around the railroad track. So, I don't know. It's it's a, it's an interesting site. It's a very it's a very interesting site. It has big historical significance to Hanson, but I I I'm, I have no expertise on really what's underground or under the water more than what the state has said at this point. And they the state doesn't seem terribly concerned with it. So I'm knocking on wood. All you can do is test. Test the, the ground and see what you come up and with. And keep testing. Exactly, and they're, they're saying it's good. So. And they're not moving fast. They're not moving that fast. This is like they're going to run slipshod over the process either. So. I, I'm assuming you're pretty familiar with the matrix of the town. You know, we, we put repairs, whether it's a school district, the police station, which is fit, which is new, mm -hmm. the fire station. Everybody puts their wish list, we'll say, so to speak, uh, on a matrix, improvement. capital improvement matrix, right. And a lot of people are saying that we're not moving quick enough with it. Is there, do you see any way of speeding up the matrix other than increasing taxes? Because it doesn't appear to us that anybody wants a tax increase. <laughs> Including... <laughs> Including us. Does right. anyone want a tax increase? No. Uh, no, Bob. I don't know if there's a way to speed up the matrix. And, I, and pers personally, I'm just, I'm going to, I just come from an old school where really things did not move so fast that you couldn't keep up with what they were going. I, I've, I mean, I haven't seen the matrix for the last couple of years, so I don't know exactly. But it's like, yeah, we've got, we've got uh, uh, items on it that we'd love to see done this year or next that are still slated for eight or ten years away and I I don't I don't have a magic wand or pill or whatever can say and this is how we because money's in the end money's the issue it's it's the whole issue money is the whole the money's issue. the whole issue it's uh, you talk about Green Hanson and Green Hanson is definitely definitely an asset I mean keeping the environment clean keeping the town clean all the volunteers that we have for Green Hanson it's fabulous. Any thoughts on how we might even increase a volunteer base with Green Hands? And I, I know there's a committee. There is a, there is a strong committee. Yep, Naomi Mastico, actually Matt Dyer, who's running for Selectman, is very strong on the committee. And it's, they are young, they are enthusiastic, they are eager, and they have a vision for what they want the town to be which I think it's a vision that is hugely worthwhile and worth listening to. I, I, I laugh because I do feel as a very cynical that there are so many times that we say, I want to be green and I'm going to drive my Hummer to Shaw's. <laughs> and there are, there, are, Perfect analogy. there are so many grandparents in town who it's like, no, I really support the environment. But I don't see my grandchildren's, the world they're living in, that's really, it's too far away for me to connect, so I can't start working on it now. So I, so I, I love, I, several years ago, 
a couple of members of Green Hansen were there. We, should, we need to stop using our clothes dryers as much as possible and put up a clothesline. And we did, and we did. So Joanne and I, we put up the clothesline and we do it and it's like, wow, you know people did this for hundreds and hundreds of years use clotheslines. What a pain in the neck. Oh, this is so hard, <laughs> but, but you know what? Oh, I'll just suck it up and do it because I know it's the right thing to do. And I, but I think that's very hard for all of us to say, you know, for my grandchildren's sake, not for this moment, but for my grandchildren's sake, I will bicycle. <laughs> yeah, like, to and from. We'd all be much better, and we'd all be in much better shape if we actually used a bicycle from time to time. So, I do, I do try to I do try to do work that myself. My son puts me to shame and makes sure he puts me to shame every chance he gets. Dad. <laughs> he rubs it in a little bit. He rubs it in. Uh, he, even in the cold, coldest days of winter, he and his wife are hanging the laundry inside to dry because they're not using that dryer. And I, go, oh, I know, and I should turn the heat down. I sh really should turn the heat down. <laughs> Put on that sweater, right? Put on that sweater, exactly. It's just, I know that my wife will uh, hang the sheets that there is no clothesline at my house, but they should be. She'll hang the sheets on the fence that goes around the pool because... Absolutely perfect. Nothing better than that than have them dried outside. So, so you, you support Green Hanson 5,000%. I, I support any, anyone who is working to protect the environment at this point. I just think the environment is... The environment is, has to be really our number one priority, and it is not in this country. We all know it. I mean, we have so many other priorities that we look at, but a century from now, it's going to be the environment that is going to have made the difference, whether we hang in there and continue in the, the lifestyle to which we are accustomed or not. And of course, I mean, we come from a generation, I mean, the baby boomers and stuff, where each generation got, had more than the generation who came before. We built on that generation. So you just don't want to think that, I mean, that, that my three-step grandsons are going to live in a world that is diminished from the one that we grew up in. Yeah, it's, it, it's definitely changed. Everybody wants to see, have their children maybe the phrase is overused, do better than they did. We, well, that's, I, yeah, I think that's a generational thing. I was very, I've been scarred, I would guess, probably three times by books. Two were in college when I read The Population Bomb. And a few months after we got married, Joanne was like, I'm pregnant. And that way I was like, oh, no. Oh, how did that happen? I was very naive. But then it was like <laughs> zero population growth. We, you know, we can't, we can't contribute more to the population. It's just, it's booming. So, so we said, okay, all right, we'll, we'll settle for one. And then there was the Peter Principle, which has scarred me totally, which makes me one surprised that I'm even here. But that was everyone rises to his level of incompetence. So I taught for That's 40 years. I taught for 40 years. I totally believe that. And if, I, I will just suggest that if you think about it over time and think about people you know, it's like, right, I see that across the boards in many instances. But it's like, so in a sense, I, Joanne and I were both, we're going to stay teachers. We love, we love with the, being with the kids. I don't want to move up the ladder in administration or something because what if I rose to my level of incompetence and was a poor Administrator. So I, I think it's interesting that I'm even running for selectman now. It's like, okay, I'm looking into an administrative position. This is something new. This is something I haven't done before. And now, because I forget, what was the third book that I was going to... Oh, Last Child in the Woods, which I read several years ago as a teacher. And it, it just broke my heart. I think it breaks all our hearts. It's like, yes, it's true. You know, our kids, even, but my Nathaniel lived in the woods behind our house. I mean, he built tree forts. He dammed little brooks. I mean, he and all his buddies, they played outside. A few years back, I took my sixth grade class at the middle school across the parking lot, 
across the retention basin and into the trees on a nature trail that Holly Walker had made. We were in the trees and I had a kid turn to me and say, Where are, where's the school? What, do we know how to get back? How can we, and you could see the fear in this sixth grade, 12 year old boy's voice and it was like, wow. You know, these guys are so unused to living outdoors now. We are just so, they may be on a playing field in a controlled supervised, position. Supervised. Totally so supervised. I mean, they may be in your backyard, probably supervised and fenced in, but we just, our, our kids have just been cut off from the environment over these, these last three or four decades to a point that I think it's a concern because you won't, you will not be an environmentalist, you won't grow up to be an environmentalist if you haven't interacted with the environment. If you don't love a tree as a kid, there's not any reason at all to save or protect a tree or plant a tree as an adult. So unless we can keep kids invested in the outdoors, I think that's, a, that's gonna be a problem. And that's that book, Last Child in the Woods, scared me for life. <laughs> like, I won't let that happen to anyone I love. It, it is an interesting concept of how children have changed over the years and the interaction with, when, when we were kids, you'd, you'd, you'd leave the house on a Saturday morning on your bicycle and ride to Nantasket Beach. And as long as you were home by the time the street lights came on, everything was pretty much okay. Oh, the street lights. You know, that, that's an interesting concept. It's, it's hard to believe we're almost up for the half hour. So, and, but we are. We're, we're getting very close to the end of the show and it's been a very interesting conversation as I've learned a lot about Mr. Bloss. A lot, of it, I, a lot of it I knew about the I education. I think you did too. <laughs> the educational piece, a lot of it I knew because I've heard so much. So it's an interesting, interesting thing. So you've got probably a minute left. What would you tell the voters? Why would they vote for West Bloss? Push yourself right to the edge and say, this is why you need to vote for me. I want to be a selectman. You're on. Uh, I guess I, would, I want to be a selectman in that I remember fondly what a great town Hanson has been. I don't want to make Hanson great again. That's not where I'm heading, but I, I have a vision of what community is, of how much work it takes to build a community, to protect a community, to keep a community going. And for me, a community ranges from an infant all the way up to our centenarians, whatever. But to keep ever to have everyone working together, feeling safe. I love that. I've always felt safe in Hanson. I've always been proud of. Our de all our departments, but especially the school department, which we were, I mean, such a part of. And I just want to keep that strong. I, I think it requires people who are invested in the town, who love the town, who just want to see the town be the best it can be. And uh, that's, that's why I'm running. Well, great. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, my name is Bob Hayes, and if you need to contact me, my email address is Bob Hayes 4433 at gmail.com or you can call me on my cell phone at 617-538-0189. If you'd ever like to do a cable show on your own, please come to Whitman Hanson Community Access here on South Avenue. Be a volunteer. They'd love to have you. You can chair your own show. Anything that you want to bring on for a topic, it's on. And until next time, thank you for watching.